Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Sergi and we are back with Resolve series with another all important idea of coefficient of restitution of a thread okay, or a string or a chord. So which is slightly less heard of, we generally talk about coefficient of restitution when collision happens between two blocks. So you can see on the screen, there are two blocks connected by a thread and one of the blocks is given a rightward velocity with speed u. And if in case someone talks about the coefficient of restitution of thread in this scenario, what does it mean? So I'll try to explain the concept first and then we'll take up the pathfinder problem from which this diagram was taken. Okay. so. This is the concept of a coefficient of restitution. It's nothing different from the coefficient of restitution, how we define for the collision between two blocks. Two very important names, okay? So I keep saying this, lot of things on the screen, so don't get scared, just follow my lead, hold my hand, I'll take you in the dark, okay, right? So uh, the integral T dt is the impulse and due to the tension in the thread, okay? So I'm defining if the tension in a thread is T, integration of the T, over the time is called the impulse due to tension in the thread. So keep this in mind for our discussion. So come to the diagram on this side. Uh, first, uh, I've taken a simpler example than what is there in the initial thumbnail, okay? So I've kept one of the ends of the thread always fixed. And the other end I connected a block, gave it a speed u. Over a period of time, what actually happens is that the thread will become taut and the block will stop for a particular instant. Okay. So from the instant where the uh, thread will become taut to the instant where the velocity becomes zero, I'll call that as a deform A2 period for the thread. Okay. So tension starts building up and becomes the value that it ensures the speed u becomes zero. This is something very familiar. All our problems of ideal strings, which are considered to be inextensible, stop here. We just say that this block will immediately come to rest and the problem gets over. But what, that is for a particular type of uh, strings, okay? So I'll now go ahead and say that this period to this period is the T deformative period, okay? Actually, T deformative would be the instant when this exactly becomes straight, okay? So from that instant. But it doesn't matter anyway, during this period, the tension is zero, so this integration will not get affected, okay? Right. Now, once the deformative period is over, something called as reform reformative period starts depending on the type of string you have taken. Okay. What is a reformative period? The tension that has stopped this block continues to act in order to ensure that that particular string gets back to its original state. Now, listen very carefully to this. At macroscopic level, as you're watching this string, it might look to you as inextensible, but at microscopic level, there will be small deformations that would be responsible for the tension in the thread. Okay, so that means from this position to this position, the thread we should believe has extended a bit. It has deformed a bit, which is not visible to the naked eye, but at microscopic level. Those microscopic deformations may stay as it is in some problems or may try to get reformed back to the original length of the string. That is what defines the reformative period, which means in some cases, we assume that the tension continues to act on this particular block in the leftward direction. So what does it mean to you in the FBD? It definitely means this block starts gaining some velocity in the leftward direction, which is what actually you see in real life. You try this experiment at home, try to tie a string to a particular object and try to throw it in the opposite direction then the block immediately doesn't come to rest. It actually rebounces back. That rebouncing back is the reformative period. Now imagine that reformative period happens for another TR seconds, then achieves a velocity V, then from here to here, we assume the interaction between the thread to block is complete. So I finalize that the total interaction period is divided into two parts. One is the deformative period, another one is the reformative period. Okay, now listen carefully to this. Any thread will always have a deformative period irrespective of its type. Deformative period is fixed. That means the block will come to rest at one instant. Now the type of thread or the value of coefficient of restitution is decided by whether the reformative uh, uh, part takes place or for how much period does it take place? Does it reform completely or does it maintain some deformations and reforms only partially? This is the crux of that concept, okay? so. I define in that scenario, come to the second point here on the left of your screen, the coefficient of restitution for a thread is defined as the impulse during 
reformation can you see i have integrated from td instant that is the start of this instant to td plus tr that means what is this period of integration tr so for that whatever the tension imparts the impulse that in the numerator divided by the tensions impulse during the deformation so remember the numerator contains reformative impulse i have written it here in english and divided by deformative impulse okay now it becomes very obvious to you that when you say e is equal to 0 for a string that means reformation never takes place the numerator itself is zero please do understand denominator always is common for all the threads in this same scenario let's suppose i repeat this experiment with different types of strings the de denominator would be the same the numerator decides the quality of e okay so when e is zero in a special case no reformation takes place and both ends of the string move with a common velocity that means this end and this end would move with common velocity but in this special case this this end is zero that's why it is going to have a zero velocity okay right whereas when other extreme situation when you talk about e is equal to 1 reformation is said to be complete that means this block will come get back the speed that it had which is u in this direction then in that scenario v will become u in the leftward direction that is when e is 1 and in e equal to 1 case the ke of the block is conserved momentum is not conserved because the momentum has got reversed but ke is conserved the speed is complete that means the reformation is complete in general the reformation won't be complete but also will start that's why numerator will ensure that the value of the threads coefficient of restitution lies between 0 and 1 now coming to the terminology the word reformation is also called restitution and because restitution decides the value of e that's why e is decided by reformation and hence the name of e is coefficient of restitution they don't call it as coefficient of deformation they are calling it as coefficient of reformation or restitution okay so now that should strengthen your concept and now we'll apply that to the pathfinder build your understanding problem 18th one you can check it in the book so instead of my simplistic example where i had a wall on the left hand side this fellow has given a block b of mass mb and a is given a rightward velocity u so again he's talking about light and almost inextensible chord but defined by the coefficient of restitution e okay right so if you want to pause this and test whether you have understood the concept or you want to try it anyway just pause the video here try it out and then go through the solution of this example problem that i am going to provide okay right so this is the example and please stay till the end of the video i'm going to give you a practice problem on this which i'll give the solution the next day okay right so two blocks a and b of mass ma and mb are placed on a frictionless horizontal floor are connected by light and almost inextensible cord block a is given a speed u and moves away from the block b coefficient of restitution is e find the velocity with which block b begins to move that is the idea he's talking about okay this begins to move means not immediately after the thread becomes start but after that entire interaction is over that is something that you need to understand that means both deformative and reformative period should be over now again a lot of things on the screen just follow my lead end of deformative period that means once this block uh, two blocks the tension has uh, ended its deformative period that is when we usually talk about our u uh, normal strings right when both the blocks achieve a common velocity v c o m c o m stands for common let's suppose that is when the deformative period is over and we end the problem here most of the times we end the problem here that means indirectly we are taking e value in such problems equal to zero okay right so we know what the value of vcom is we can conserve linear momentum and then solve the problem okay so that's not the issue uh, now choose the b block because he's asking for the b block i ask b block how much of the impulse of deformation did it feel you go to the start picture b was not having any momentum now in this picture b is having a rightward momentum of mb into vcom therefore total impulse of deformation that b had imparted was mb into vcom Similarly, choose B for the end of reformative period. Imagine deformative period continued into reformation. That means tension continued to act. Listen carefully. If tension continues to act, I think VCOM will increase to VB. And since tension here will act backward, VCOM here will decrease to VA. Okay, so the new velocities will come. And once this happens, we cannot say E is equal to zero. E will be greater than zero. Okay, right. So choose B again from deformative to reformative period and ask how much reformation impulse it felt. I think you would say MB into VB 
minus VCOM. That's what I've written. This ratio is nothing but the quotient of restitution of the st string. Okay, right. And we already know that VCOM is M1 U1 plus M2 U2 divided by M1 plus M2, right? Which in this problem is simply due to the mass of AS velocity. Okay, so just substitute this VCOM here and here and rearrange, you will get the value of VB in terms of E. And you could see when E is equal to zero, you'll get back this thing, which is what usually happens. But this is a general case scenario where you are taking the properties of string also into account. It would be interesting just to see when E is one, what would be the value of speed of B, okay, right. So as a part of the practice, whatever example I gave here is one dimensional, right? So it would be very interesting for us to see what would happen to these kind of situations where a string has a quotient of restitution other than zero when you take a two dimensional motion. So uh, this is what we are going to take up, take up tomorrow in the check your understanding section of the same chapter in the book, but I'll do it in the Pathfinder solution series. And I'll use the concepts that I have built up in this particular video. So try this one out. This is the first problem in check your understanding, very neat problem. But once you understand the quotient of restitution of that particular thing, so he, here, here is the golden words, right? While you are reading, he's talking about almost inextensible but elastic cord, what does elastic mean? Elastic means E is equal to one. So try it out and then we'll meet tomorrow in that particular video. So for the rest of the result series, please go to the playlist in case you are new to this channel, try to go through all of those. So I think there are 10 videos on this and each one has its own place in the channel. Okay, so please make sure that you go through them. And for the rest of the series, uh, Pathfinder Solutions, Olympiad Workouts and AATS Select Series, uh, you have the playlists in the link in the description below. Okay, so please make sure you go through them. And uh, if you like them, like, share and subscribe to my channel and uh, keep coming back. I'll be providing with a lot of quality content, the concepts. Once uh, you watch a video in this channel, I think you take something away from those five to 10 minutes that you do spend on this channel. Okay, so stay close and come back. Thank you very much.